Hello and welcome to Black Bear Forge. Today I've been working on a couple of little trade axes, often called tomahawks. These are just a real simple wrapped eye axe. And I thought I would bring you along while I make another one. Now the two I'm making are actually very simple, very inexpensive axes because they aren't meant to be used. These aren't even wall hangers. The person that wants these is another blacksmith. He's making a western themed stair railing of some sort and these are going to actually be welded in place with handles on them. There's a lot of other similar souvenir -y type stuff welded in this. It's for somebody with way more money than I would ever spend on a railing. And it's a case where the customer gets what the customer wants. It's nothing that my buddy would ever design himself, but the customer asked for it, so that's what they're gonna get. And he asked me to make these two little trade axes for him. But these are just mild steel, no hard steel cutting edge. Let's make one that has a hard steel cutting edge. It's actually a functional, usable tool when it's done. Now to do that, I'm starting off with a piece of quarter by one and a half mild steel bar that is 12 inches long. So that's about six mil by, it looks like 37 mil and about 300 millimeters long. Exact sizes aren't super critical. These were made in all sorts of different sizes. Every blacksmith and every trade company that was dealing in axes like this historically had a little different take on them. So it's okay to make them a little larger, a little smaller. Then for the cutting edge, I have a piece of 1075. Unfortunately, this isn't quite as wide, so I can't just cut off a piece and use it. We'll have to draw this out sideways to make a nice taper that fits into the axe as we fold it up and then cut it off, but we'll make it about an inch and a half long and do that before we start spreading the blade. Now today I'm going to work in the gas forge and that is because in a gas forge I can get the whole blade hot at once, get it all up to welding heat. It really helps make the welding go a little bit smoother. No reason you can't do these in a coal forge. I've done plenty of them in a coal forge and I thought about doing that today, but the wind is up and when the wind is up, sometimes it blows through the open eaves of the shop and makes the shop a little smoky with the coal forge. So it just isn't a day that I wanna work in the coal forge. So we're gonna do this in the gas forge. I'm probably gonna let it run the whole time so it stays up at welding heat the whole time. That means it's gonna be loud, it's gonna be noisy. I probably won't narrate this. So maybe after it's all done, I'll turn the volume down so that the forge noise isn't so annoying. And then I'll do a voiceover for you to explain what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to do is take care of the cutting edge, so I'm just spreading out the edge where it will insert into the axe body. It's easier to do this right at the edges of the anvil. And again, this is a piece of 1075 that I'm using, so it's a fairly high carbon, but not real high, which is an ideal carbon for this sort of an axe. To help it stay put during the welding process so it doesn't kind of squirt out of the joint, I'm going to cut some teeth into it. It's really easily done with just a, a hot chisel and a series of teeth going one direction and then I come back and I cut a matching series of teeth the other direction and that just creates a bunch of barbs and that will help hold into the cleft in the axe body when we go to weld. This is the body of the axe, it's just mild steel. Start just by looping it over, we want the ends to be even. So there's a little bit of an adjustment involved there. These bit tongs or knee tongs work very well for this kind of work. Continuing to close that up to get the eye about the size I wanted. This is not a welding heat yet. I'm going to go ahead and insert the drift. Even though it's not welded, this gives me a chance to get the eye very close to the size I want it before welding. 
when I weld it this way, can be a little bit prone to splitting the weld because there's so little material right at the joint between the eye and the body of the axe. You don't get much opportunity for refinement. So it's really nice to go ahead and get this all welded right there. Or excuse me, it's really nice to get the eye almost to the final shape before you do any welding. I'm going to use some plugs. This is Iron Mountain plugs. It looks like I'm using way more than I need here. It's a hard habit to break. But you want to make sure there is flux all the way down in there. That will carry away any scale. It's the first welding heat. Real light, quick blows. Once it starts to cool off from welding heat, it's time to get it back in the fire. The little notch that I'm forming here is fairly typical in this style of axe. It doesn't serve a whole lot of function, but it does make the axe look a lot better. And it's a, a classic design, so I'm going to put that in. Here I'm going to open up the cleft a little bit. I've you know, only welded back up towards the eye. So I'm opening up the part that I have not welded so I can insert the axe bit. Add a little flux in there before we do that. It's a little bit fiddly. It'd be easier to just pick it up with your fingers, but it's awfully close to the hot axe head, so I didn't do that. Just drive it in the best you can. Unfortunately, the teeth that keep it from coming out also make it more difficult to get in. Let's get it all straightened up and in line. Ideally, the end of the bit and the end of the axe body should be flush. I wasn't able to get it in that far, so I'll have to trim it off later. Just a touch more flux. Lost quite a bit in that process, but there is still some trapped in there. Again, light quick blows, and once it starts to cool down, it goes back in the fire. There's no reason to keep hammering if you're no longer welding. I typically wire brush and reflux every other heat. I don't do that every heat. These welds at the very edge, putting the cutting steel in, start back at the base of the weld and work out towards the edge, so you're squirting the flux and the contamination out a little bit more each time. You start at the very end and work your way back, you're going to be able to trap things and you might not get a good weld. We continually refine the profile of the axe. It's easier to do this incrementally as you're forging and welding, otherwise it gets real out of shape and it's hard to screen. Looks like we're working right at the very edge this time. Here I'm going to the big double diagonal peen hammer to spread the, the bit out. It spreads it wider without spreading it longer. I'll just use this for one heat, but it's still at welding heat. At this point, any forging on that surface that's been welded, I continue to work at a welding heat. Now let's try out the Daniel Moss rounding hammer. It's a nice hammer for kind of smoothing up some of the 
texture left by that diagonal peen hammer, which sort of leaves a rough appearance. This will smooth it out, make it look a little bit better. But pretty much it's spread as much as it needs to be now. At this point, I'm really just cleaning it up. So back to the lighter hammer just for some smoothing. Certainly you could use a flatter at this point to get it as smooth as possible. the temptation to just drive that drift in as hard as you can. Instead, forge the axe head around the drift. Shape the eye to the drift. Don't just try to stretch the eye. That's a good way to break the weld apart if you're not being careful. So just look to see what's conforming and do whatever you got to do to make it all fit. You are drawing the eye out a little bit, so you will have to drive the drift in a little further as it draws out. At this point, the eye is pretty much the shape I want, and it's about the largest part of the drift, so I'm just using the drift as a handle. It allows me to look at it really easily, see if it's twisted, if it's straight. Just make all these little minor adjustments at this point. pretty good. The drift gets real hot. I'm going to have to drift it any more than this. I'd have to cool the drift off because even with the hot melt gloves it gets too hot to handle. You can see smoke coming up from one of my wire brushes next to the drift there. Go ahead and put my touch mark on it. Doing the touch mark puts a little bit of a bow in it to so straighten that back out. Really, it's pretty much done. It's about all the forging that needs to be done to it. I'm going to brush some of the scale off. Grind it back a little bit. That's what it looks like coming off the grinder. So that's all of the forging steps for our trade axe or tomahawk that needs to slow cool, needs to normalize or kneel, depending on what your preference is. And then we're going to need to harden and temper it and then sharpen it. So as with most videos that require a hardening and tempering process, this is just going to have to wait till another day, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, we'll get back to hardening and tempering our little trade axe or tomahawk, whatever you want to call it. I did a little bit of rough grinding while it was still hot just to clean up the profile and get rid of where that hard steel cutting edge stuck out from the body of the axe. That's something that doesn't usually weld too well, so I like to grind that back. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends or on social media, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.